everyone, today I'm going to be installing a fire suppression sprinkler system right here in my garage. Now, uh, this is going to be one of multiple part video. I'm not sure how many parts, probably at least three minimum as far as doing like the actual pipe work and sprinkler stuff and then probably another one of installing flow switch and monitor modules and connecting it to the fire alarm system and testing it all out. It could, I wouldn't be surprised if it's probably a five or six part video. But this is the first part, as you know, and this is the part where I gotta figure out sort of what I'm doing here. So first of all, let me walk you guys through my plan and what I've done, gone so far, and how I think I'm gonna do this. So this is going to be installed in this garage building I've got in my backyard. This is a f uh, I think it's around 500 square feet nothing too big wish it was bigger but it's pretty good so i plan on having 11 sprinkler heads which sounds really excessive but it's not really because if you did it just by square footage if it was a big open room that many is probably more than enough but it's not an open room there's multiple rooms and multiple heights of ceilings and stuff so let me tell you, let me tell you how it's going to be in this front section. We're going to call that second floor and first floor and the loft. So on this first floor here, I'm going to have one, two heads for this first, probably 15 foot long section. There's going to be two sprinkler heads. Then for this area, since it's higher up, I'm going to have one head in this higher up area. Down here, I'm going to have one head again in this lower sort of back area reason for having one up here is say one there couldn't really get into this area and one here couldn't get any water coverage behind this wall like each one's sort of got a wall blocking it so we kind of need one up there and then obviously this room is a completely separate room this washroom and the lights just turned off so this room will get a sprinkler head and then we got these other rooms over here so the lower half of this room will get one. We can't just put one just up there because it wouldn't have any coverage down here because there's a roof in the way. So we'll have one down here on the first floor level. And this room is only one level, so we just need one up there. And then we'll have one up here in the loft part of this room. So that's pretty much all of the living space that anyone would actually ever occupy or be working in. Though we have this attic up here you can see on this side we got about two feet of attic space now this attic is only about 15 probably around eh, maybe 14 feet by eight feet so one sprinkler head can handle this area i'd say this one though as you can see is a lot longer so i'm thinking we'll do two up there one sort of in this area one over there sort of sort of the same thing that we have going on on the main level just up I've got some materials here. I got all of this copper pipe. I uh, don't, not experienced with plumbing at all. So this is gonna be me learning. I've done very limited in my trades program at school, but that's about it. So we've got seven of these 12 foot lengths this is what really adds up the cost is for these guys these are like 40 bucks each i think so uh we got seven of those if i don't need all of them i can return them and then there's a bunch of stuff in here for other other things i'm going to need so that's for soldering the, the torch there i and i got a spare bottle for it um in here i, I showed you that i've got Whatever this thing's called, I know what it does. I don't know what it's called. It'll clean the pipe, basically. That's This one will go on the inside. That one will go on the outside. You've got to clean it up to solder it. Um, speaking of that, I got the, the flux stuff. For the soldering, got this grit cloth stuff. I got this pipe cutter. red tape, 
solder. These end caps, I don't know if I'm going to need any. 25 of those. I got two valves here. I don't know where the other one went. Well, there's supposed to be two. Looks like the other one. I don't know. There's two of these anyways. I need one for the drain. And... I need one for the drain and one for the main water going into the sprinkler system. 25 of these T things. I think I counted out that I'd need like 16 of them. I got more of these brushes because I didn't notice that this came with it. I did the same thing again. I bought 20 of these where I only probably need a few of them. But um, So I got these connectors. I don't know what the proper terms are for any of this stuff. So these are just 90s, I'd assume. Copper elbow 90, yeah. I needed 20 of those, I got 25. I needed I needed to go from the pecs in the wall out to this, so I got this. This thing here, this is called they got a shark bite written all over all of these stuff. Um this seems sketchy to me, not gonna lie to you guys. I don't know sure how I feel about that because it says it just like pushes on. It sounds really scary to me. It's like, I don't know how much I trust to push on. Um, I'm not, I'm only doing one because I'm just doing it in one spot where it's very visible. It's, you, it's gonna be accessible. So I'm not, not that worried about it. But if it was in a wall, I don't know how I'd feel about that. That almost seems like backstabbing a receptacle, but the plumbing version of that. I've got 11 of these, I guess they're female threaded connectors. These are what sprinkler heads will actually screw into. So there's 11 of those for all 11 heads. I got this bigger one. It's a half inch to three quarter inch because not this one, but I've got one like this. It's in a box. Don't feel like getting it out. That will hopefully, yes, okay. I did that right. That's a pressure gauge. Show me my pressure on the system. There's a bunch of these things. Six of these taller ones. I don't know what they actually measure. So there's six of those ones because I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if I'll need these taller ones. I know I'll definitely need quite a few of these shorter ones. There's this fire alarm flow switch. Um, not really sure if this one's even meant for fire alarm. I bought a proper Potter fire alarm one, but it, I bought the wrong thing. I got the sprinkler heads on order. I'm still waiting on those. I got just the normal pendant ones, 10 of those. And then I got one of those recessed ones that drops down from the bathroom. So that looks a little nice from the finished ceiling. And what else is coming on Amazon? I'll write some cages for the sprinkler heads. In total so far for a cost, this has cost me $803 for this from Home Depot and then 219 from stuff that I've ordered. So what's that? 1,021, I suppose. 22. So you guys gotta blow this video up and make me some money back because now Nick's gonna be broke. I think I'm gonna do everything that I can before tying it in to this PEX in the wall. I'll do that very last step.
Okay, so as you guys saw from the time lapse, this is what I have created so far. So this will be like the wall is vertical this way. So this will be where the water comes in. This will be our main shutoff. And uh, after the main shutoff will be the pressure gauge. And then this will be our flow switch. And this will be our drain. And this is where it will continue up into the rest of the sprinkler system. All right, let me show you guys where we're at. We've got this run that will go from up here across to two sprinkler heads. So I've got my my two sprinkler, I got a sprinkler where there will be one there and one down there. And this is where it will branch off to go into this room right here. And this will join up up there. And here we got where it will go into the wall. Guys, a little update, I extended this one because I didn't like where it was, so this sprinkler head is right here. I have teed off to go down here into this storage room where I have my sprinkler head here. I should have put on another, um, that's hot. I should have put on another thing there because that's kind of loose, but I can throw one on the side there maybe because I'm going to run one down into the top part of that room. update we've now got this guy coming from down there as we were at last time and i've made this guy so i've soldered on this end here so this is going to be for our pendant sprinkler head up here i put this guy on which is what we'll strap it up to right there i may actually want the bigger one i'll double check because i haven't soldered this on and we've got a tee off to go down there i measured this is nine and a half inches out from there four and a half from there so i've measured down here Nine and a half, four and a half. Yes, I gotta get a cover on that someday. Gonna drill a hole through there. on there flux you man is this one already all flucked up yes it is i can feel it so we'll put it on the inside and the, i'm, not, I'm not, now i'm gonna double check if this one will work or not and it won't really so i think i'm gonna go for the bigger one that's pretty well lined up challenging part to do this without lighting things on fire which I got a fire extinguisher right under me
Okay, this is how we're looking up here. This goes through the floor. So hopefully this is all solid up here and I don't have to come back and fix anything. was a challenging one i'm not gonna lie to try and do this without lighting anything on fire is challenging i think we have it soldered okay i can't really tell it's kind of hard to see i'm gonna hope we have it good change up this strap because it was too long so i had to drill two holes in the side so we can just put it in like that Your thing's gonna get a little more difficult. So as you guys have seen, I've made this piece and I made this piece that sticks up through there and goes nearly to the roof. I think I measured it out pretty well where it's gonna end up. And I've taken this section, it's not connected to anything. I just put it through that hole where they're going to run up top, but I've got to figure out what I need to do to connect them behind that wall there. So I'm gonna have a T because I not only want to run that way, but I want to run that way, so the T will face that way, but I need to connect it to that one somehow. So that is where I am currently at. i to figure here. out how we're going to get over and put this all together. Alright guys, well I think this is where I'm going to end this part one video, so make sure to come back for part two if you enjoyed this and are interested. Thanks for watching everyone.